Vercel was initially pushing Edge really hard because it sounds great to have your app render closer to your users. When they send a request, they get a response much faster, theoretically. But this came with a lot of problems. The first I want to talk about is Edge runtime itself. I know we've talked about the Edge runtime a bit before, and I have been a huge proponent of it because it's so much faster than Node. It still is. If you can run on Edge runtime and it's not a big issue, you almost certainly should because Node comes with a lot of native dependencies, a lot of bulk. It is inherently going to be slower. It doesn't really matter where you run it. Edge runtime is also much cheaper. The amount of money it costs per request is basically nothing, often as low as 60 cents per million requests. That's insane. That's really, really low numbers for serverless, endless compute. They don't have to worry about scaling up or down at any point, but it is a different runtime. And with that comes inherent complexity. I really like how Lee called it out here. There's feedback that he strongly agrees with regarding Edge and all the controversy around it, which is that something they previously believed strongly in, Edge rendering, didn't work out as expected. That doesn't mean it's always bad. It can be done well. It just didn't happen often in practice because the DX of two runtimes is painful. And I absolutely agree. Having to make sure our code works properly in the Lambda node endpoints, as well as in the traditional like Edge Cloudflare endpoints that use Cloudflare's worker protocols and runtimes has been really painful. And the result is that we do a lot of weird stuff to make sure our dependencies work in both environments. And often they work in one, but not the other. And then we end up in dependency hell. And I've been dealing with this a lot. And as I've mentioned in other videos, you can check out my partial pre-rendering video or my reason why I'm off serverless video. I talk a lot about that time to first bite. How long does it take for a user to see something? And after that, how long does it take for them to get the correct content? And with Edge, I can get them something faster because there's no cold start and the computer's closer to them. But the rest of the content would often come slower because the data has to go a longer distance. I actually have a diagram here that I made for my serverless video a couple months ago probably like seven or eight, probably, God, it's probably longer than that, like nine or 10 at this point. But I made a video about why we were moving towards Edge and off of Lambda. And the problem I was describing, this is the world, the user's one place, US West 2 is somewhere else. I have my server and I have my database. If I move the server closer to the user, the amount of distance that has to be traveled on the internet actually goes up because my server makes multiple requests to the database. The first is to authenticate the user to confirm they're authorized to do whatever they're doing. The second one is whatever the server is actually getting data for like seeing, is this user an admin or not? And now we know they're signed in, we know they're an admin. Now we actually have to get the data that they want. Now we've done these three round trips across this long distance and you can't beat out the speed of light. You just can't do it. So if you move the server closer to the user, they might be able to get something back earlier, but the correct response coming out at the end here, that's gonna inherently take longer. We can still get a lot of the benefits of the edge runtime, even if we lock it to be in West 2, where we get the faster cold starts, but we still have to deal with this distance being traveled. And we still have to deal with some compute spinning up in order to process a response. What if I want the first response to come from here and I'm okay with the next response coming from here? What this would look like, we'll just call this what it is, a CDN. So now we're gonna take this arrow, move it here, the user will almost immediately get a response from the CDN, but at the same time, we'll go to the server, which will fill in the rest of the content after. To be more fair, I'll make this a dotted line. This is the partial response we get immediately when we use something like partial pre-rendering. At the same time, that CDN layer, which is probably just some edge compute, kicks off to your Lambda, your server, whatever, and says, hey, I need the rest of this page's content. And technically what's happening is it's streaming it back here, and then the rest of the response comes in later. This is like the full response it gets after coming from this second arrow. But for the sake of conceptualizing this, it's easier to just know this goes to the user. And once you have these types of patterns where you have a CDN serving what it can as quickly as possible, and then you have a server serving everything else when you need to, that's great. This is a really good compromise that gets you most of the best of all worlds. The catch is that this part is still going to take a bit longer because you have to wait for the server to get hit, cold start to happen, all of these back and forths to occur, and then you can send the response to the user. But we've just shortcut almost all of the shortcomings that are going to be the rest of this video. But I've already talked about partial pre-rendering. You should go check out my video on it if you haven't already seen it. What I want to talk about today is the alternatives because a lot of people are pushing a lot of other solutions here. Kent is a fan of moving your database to the edge. This is distributed databases. So instead of your data living in one place that has all of the most up-to-date information and caching it near the edge, this is the idea of taking your actual database and replicating it many places in the world so you can fetch it from the place closest to you. Anyone who has tried this knows how 
painful it can be. Everything from transactional security to latency to just making sure the region you're hitting is actually performant enough to deal with the traffic is really painful, especially if you have a single centralized node where writes occur, you end up having to hit one node anyways and doing a lot of work to diff whether or not this is a query that can hit a cache versus a mutation that needs to hit the native like main database. You end up with a lot of problems and as cool as it is seeing companies like Terso working to solve it and Cloudflare to some extent with what they're doing with D1. These are both SQLite based forks that are trying to reinvent how we're storing our data. Planet scales much simpler. They're a boring read replica. They just make read only copies of your database in other places. But Planet Scale themselves has seen the same change happening and is no longer focused on building out that type of regional support because the demand for it is really low and the likelihood you'll find success with it is even lower. If we want to go back to the original state, which I'll go in here, what's happening here, instead of just West 2, we would also have clusters like this all over the place. We'll call this EU West 1, just make up some random name. So now we have US East 1, US West 2, and EU West 1, all different regions, all with their own separate databases. So now, hopefully, when I make my request, this would be smart enough to hit the server that's as close as possible to the database, and then we get this back. This is the hope, and this is a good hope. If this works out the way it's supposed to, this is pretty cool. The harsh reality is this is not what this ends up looking like. This is what I end up seeing in production most of the time. You've replicated your database in a handful of key locations. You're still edge routing, so this will be any of the hundreds, if not thousands of locations Cloudflare operates out of. You have no guarantee that this and this are close, unless you're using D1 and it's doing a good enough job of replicating close enough, which means if it hasn't replicated or the data in this database is stale and you actually have to grab data from this database or any of the other nearly infinite number of things that can go wrong with a setup like this, you're often still running into the problem of there being more distance between your server that is processing the request and the database that is the data that request needs being distant from each other. And now you have a whole separate replication problem of making sure the data makes it between all of these different databases. And yes, a good provider should theoretically solve this for us and make sure all of this data is getting interwoven and distributed properly between between all of these, what most usually do is they make that final request. If this is, let's say most of these are reads, but this one's a write. This write will go over here <laughs> instead. And here is where we start to see the problem. This is not a good experience. And having to worry about your databases all staying in sync, or honestly, the way this will work in most places is more like this, where that second request needs to go confirm with daddy server that yes, I am safe to do this change. And then it sends the update to the server saying, yep, cool, here's the current state of things. And now finally, this can get sent to the user. <laughs> That's not great. The amount of distance that has to be traveled here is absurd. And the reason for that, the reason we even care enough to put this here is to get the user some response as quickly as possible. Theoretically, in a magic world where all of your databases are perfectly replicated next to your edge servers everywhere, yes, this problem goes away. If this is magically just here and is a perfect replicated set that will magically handle all of the different cases around transactional guarantees, somebody writing something different from somebody else on different servers at the same time, if you've magically handled all of those things, absolutely. Don't worry about where you're deploying. Just deploy on edge and know your data is closer. That's what Kent is saying is happening here. I just don't see it yet. I think we are a far, far ways away from this future. And again, I would love to be wrong, but what you're ending up doing when you use solutions like this is you're limiting how many regions that code can run in, which means you're limiting time to first byte. As I showed in the other diagram, that first byte, the first thing you see, should ideally come from something hilariously close. This CDN response should be as close to the user as possible and require almost no compute to generate and get to the user. From there, things are more complex, but it's still a relatively short full distance traveled, even if I go back to like the way this was in... Uh, the other example, I just move this further away. Total distance traveled here is comically less than any edge distributed data with transactions managed. It's a really, really hard sell to just start distributing your data automatically. Nothing's done this well enough to be an easy production recommendation for me. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the chat if there are companies you know of that are doing millions of row reads and writes per second with edge distributed data with no issues because I just, I don't know of them. It's a very, very new pattern. If you want to talk about bleeding edge stuff, it's data 
replication at the edge. This is as bleeding edge as it gets. And I don't know of anyone doing this in production versus a CDN response. That's what we're all doing in production. We're all using CDNs for shit already. And then proxying through the CDN, a stream for the rest of the content that hits a server in a given warehouse that is directly next to your database. Yeah, this is going to continue being the standard forever. And I hate that I feel like the Rails guys right now have just run a server, but seriously, just run a server. The distribution shouldn't be because users are all over the globe. You should be able to reasonably distribute your important pieces and cache things as you need to. It's just, it's insanity to me to think we're going to solve this problem and get Edge viable by reinventing SQL in order to get databases close enough to the users. In terms of like the, the amount of risk and the amount of change here, having a CDN that can also stream updates is a much smaller bet than solving databases globally replicated forever. It just, it's confusing to me. Something I want to clarify here is that I'm not saying don't run Edge. There's a lot of good use cases for Edge compute. If you can have it on a CDN, you should. CDNs are going to require even less work, less compute, and get a response even faster. If you can't have it on CDNs, but it doesn't require much data, it doesn't require multiple round trips to get that data, then running something on Edge makes a lot of sense. A lot of the examples Lee gives here are great. Things like redirects, proxying, setting up headers, running middleware, making sure the user's off. If you can do those things without making a ton of round trips, you should. There are so many use cases for Edge that aren't just rendering your page, like making sure users go to the right place in the first place. Let's say you have different servers in different regions for things like localization or like data privacy requirements. You can use Edge as the place to choose which server you go to. Vercel themselves are using Edge to figure out if your response should be from the CDN, if it should be from Lambda or both. Like their partial pre-rendering is them using Edge in a really powerful way. And they did that because they saw the big benefits of Edge, which are we can get you a response way faster, but they didn't want the cost of your server now has to communicate with a distributed database or for, with a database really far away. It's chaos. And they have chosen to ignore most of that. They found a compromise that involved them using Edge to provide the best of both in almost all cases. And to go back to the tweet this was originally a reply to, the point of this tweet is very simple. Vercel gives us the pieces to do this however we want to. Why are we complaining? This is why I'm so excited about what Vercel has done. They gave us all of the pieces where we can run on Lambda, we can run on Edge, we can pin Edge to a region, we can put things in a CDN statically. We have all of these different options and we can do what makes the most sense to us as like engineers and our understanding of it, but also what's the best for our users. And we have the necessary pieces to do it. And Vercel built a default that is almost always the right solution. They did a great job of looking at how we use all these things, how I complained about these things and how they benefit the user experience and found a benefit where we use CDNs for what they're good for. We use edge for routing the traffic and we use our boring old node lambdas to actually generate the pages because they're right next to our databases anyways. I really like that we have this balance struck because as I mentioned in my quote tweet here, two runtimes was an incredibly painful thing to deal with. And I felt like I was in Schrodinger's JavaScript. So that's my thoughts on the current controversy around edge and edge routing and whether or not we should be doing it. I don't believe we have succeeded in moving data to the edge. Because of that, I don't think we should move our compute there either. At the very least, not all of it. It makes a lot of sense to run a lot of our compute near our databases, but the things that we should run near our users, we probably should run near our users. There's a balance to be struck here. I think we're closer than ever to achieving it, but I personally don't see a future where we magically replicate our databases across the world and expect a fork of SQLite to carry us there. I could be wrong, and I would love to go back here a year or two from now and and say, I was wrong, Terso won, D1 is great, we should just use SQLite distributed for everything. But I don't see that as particularly viable. That's all I have to say about this. If you want to hear my deeper thoughts on how we ended up here in the first place and why I made this move over to Edge, I'll pin that video in the corner. It's one of my best. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. But if you already have or you're just not interested, there's a video below that YouTube seems to think you like instead. Appreciate you all a ton. Thank you guys as always. Peace nerds.